Hi everyone, I'm Jeff and you're watching Outdoors in the UP. Um, hang on one second. Today we're going to be building a miniature hay wagon out of a mini running gear. Uh, here's the running gear. It's rated for 2,200 pounds. I bought it from Northern Tool. Um, I'll put a link in the description in case anybody's interested in purchasing one of these after I'm done building it. But I'm going to build a small hay wagon. I've got family coming up in two days. Nothing, nothing like putting things off until the last minute. Um, but in any event, I'm going to build a miniature hay wagon with a railing around three sides. Um, throw a couple bales of hay in there. And then when they're here, there's five young ones, five of them under the age of five, I believe. One of the two parents, it's my brothers and sister, um, will be able to get on my little Kubota here. You hook that to the to the running gear to the hay wagon and pull them around on the trails that we've got going through our woods so that's tonight's goal um in case anybody's used these before now i didn't come up with this i luckily i learned this from watching other people's videos on youtube uh let me pause you for a second all right this is what i learned watching other people that, that have put these together watching what i learned watching the youtube videos of these um when you get these, when you get these running gears, the directions say to put these brackets flipped so that this part is over here. Um, if you do that, you're going to have to, I suggest not doing it because when you turn, when you turn your wheels, we'll do this side. If this bracket is over here, another inch and a half the tires will rub and you'll have to do something with the beams. You'll have to cut notch around them with a grinder, do something. By putting them to the inside, when your beam is here, your tires won't touch it. So I flipped those all to the more narrow side. There's this more narrow stance. That, um, so I'm gonna turn this off for a minute. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put this up on jack stands or blocks, whatever. I'll pull the tires off because I need to get in with a drill to drill holes in my four by six beams right there so that I can run carriage bolts through them. So I'll put this up, take all four tires off, grease them while they're off, um, put the beams on. And then at the same time, I'm gonna cut this draw bar type tongue. Can you, I'm sorry, there's a glare. Cut this draw bar type tongue off here at the bottom of the welds. And I've got, I apologize for my mess. I've got five different projects going on here in the garage. Um, I'm going to put this two-inch regular um, hitch on the draw bar instead because if you look, this tractor has a quick hitch with a trailer mover on it. The big one has the same thing, quick hitch with a trailer mover. And the Ranger has a two-inch ball that's normally in the back end. And that way, by swapping this out, I'll be able to, to pull a, the wagon, hay wagon, with all three of those machines, the Ranger and the bolt tractors. So I'll turn this off so you're not bored watching me do this part, and I'll bring you back later and probably put you on a time lapse so you don't get too bored watching it. But I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay. The hitch is on. Two-inch ball hitch. The beams are on. But I ran into a little trouble here. I had to improvise. Green lumber is always swollen. This is supposed to be a four by six, which would be three and a half by five and a half. But when they soak it in the creosote um, or whatever the the agent is, the anti-rotting agent, it swells. So my bolts were only four inches long. They should have worked if it would have been three and a half inches wide, but it wasn't. So had to use a oscillating multi-tool to notch in around so I could get those bolts to work. Um, so we've got our eight inch beams on. Now I'm gonna put five two by fours running across, one at the front, one at the back, and the other three at two foot on center. You'll see the layout there. I'm gonna put those on and uh, we'll get this knocked out.
Okay, we've got all the, uh, obviously we've got the beams on, we've got the cross members on. Now we just have to put the, uh, the two by six decking down. Um, that's, that's a thing too. I was gonna just use five quarters, um, you know, to five quarters decking, thinking it would be cheaper, but all the five quarters was treated and I'm building this on the cheap. So the only thing treated are my four by six runners at the bottom. Everything else is just regular uh, untreated lumber. I've got the luxury of being able to store this always in my barn, so I'm not real worried about it being outside and using treated treated lumber. I was thinking about painting it, but I don't know. My wife and my mother talked me out of that. They said it would look like crap after I used it for a utility wagon, but I don't know. I may change my mind, but we'll see. For right now, it's just going to be regular yellow pine. Um, so now I'll put the, uh, the decking down, and then we just have the railing left. Stay tuned. <clears throat> okay, so we got all the two by six decking down, screwed in, everything's good to go here. Um, my gaps are a little uneven because if I ran them tight with no gap, first off, you got to deal with the warping and use a cat's paw to pry it over or whatever. And then I would have ended up with one down here. Where am I at? One down here that I would have had to rip an additional two by six that I would have had to rip down. I just didn't feel like messing with it. And it's, after all, it's, it's not a model airplane. It's a freaking hay wagon for hay rides and stuff and whatever. So the little gap variance could matter less to me. I don't care. So now <clears throat> I just have to down here, I'm going to fill these gaps in with two by four or two by six blocks so that it's three inches thick. And then I've got these steak pockets. I've got these steak pockets that I bought on Amazon, which I like a lot. They're really nice. They've got bottoms on them. And I'm gonna screw these, screw these in over here once those gaps are filled in down there. And I'm gonna put three of them on the long sides and two across the back and then make two by four railings and then run two by fours across for, uh, for railings to keep the kids in. So we'll do that now and uh, get this knocked out.
Okay. We've got our steak pockets on. I got eight of them. So I could put three per long side and two across the back. Um, but if these sides aren't perfectly the same, with three steak pockets, when you go to put the rail in, it'll just be harder to fit in because they all have to be lined up perfectly. So I'm trying it with two. Um, I didn't realize that what I don't like about these, I don't know if it's going to be an issue or not, was there's only one hole per side. And I'm using these structural leg screws, so they, they feel solid. I have to put the 2x4s in here to see how they'll feel uh, when you actually put some leverage and some weight on them when people lean against them on the hayride. Remember, that's what it's for. For right now, they feel fine. If I have to, once I put the, the verticals and then the horizontals on, if it feels like they flex too much, I'll come back and space these differently and put a third one on each side. But for now, I'm going to try this and see how it goes. But I think it's shaping up pretty well. It's done. Um, the stake pockets were bigger than I would like, which means, let me get a decent angle here, there's some slop in the railing. But it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not really load bearing. Some kids will lean on it a little bit, but um, they shouldn't go anywhere. And whatever, I, I could just bolt them permanently to the side of the wagon, but I don't want that. I want to be able to remove these when we're doing yard work and putting putting trees or limbs and all that kind of crap in there. But I don't know. Came out pretty good. I call it a uh, a three or a four beer job. And I don't know if I gave the dimensions. It's eight foot long, and I went fifty two inches wide, just because four feet seemed a little narrow to me. Um, I believe four feet would have kept the, the, this, the width of the tires underneath. You see I've got an overhang here, but I don't know. I just wanted a little bit of extra room, I guess. We'll see if that haunts me. But uh, most of my trails are seven and eight feet wide. There's some narrow spots, but this should fit down there pretty well. We'll see. Thanks for watching, guys.